Hey everybody, we're glad that you joined us again this week for Tight Line. I'm here with my new friend Jared. And uh, we're fishing in a local lake. It's actually a big local lake, about 30 acres. And it's getting close to summer here in Georgia. It's late May. It feels like summer today. It's about 90 degrees. And he's been fishing a lot after dark. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to fish from late evening into the dark, which is a great way for you to catch them when it gets too hot to be out in the middle of the day. You can either you know, come really early or stay late. And today we're going to concentrate on staying late and see if we can catch a few. Tear them up. Thanks for being with us. When we first started out fishing this day, we were just getting ready and I cast out a white trick worm and caught one and um, Jared was actually wacky rigging a watermelon seed trick worm and he caught one also. So Jared's doing something that's it's really not the easiest way in the world to fish. It's a pretty cool thing. He's getting rid of some of these keeper bass, right? But he's doing what we call wacky rigging that trick worm you just kind of rig it right through the middle and it does like this. And you work along and the, these suspended fish that aren't on the top or on the bottom, he's catching them really good on clear lakes like this one. You'll hear me say on the show we were using a zoom trick worm. Well, this is what a zoom trick worm looks like. It's a six inch, just straight worm. It's got a little bit thicker part of a tail, makes it skip really good. Um, I like to throw a white a lot of times because fish react to it, but the natural colors work really well also. In the show, Jared was throwing one called watermelon. It's kind of a translucent green with black flakes in it. But so you can see it a little better, I'm going to show you with this white one, what we call wacky rigging. Basically, wacky rigging is just taking a two-aught or a three-aught hook and pushing it right through what would be the egg sac of a, a regular worm. There's one made into this worm, and it sits just like this. You throw it out there and you let it sink a little bit and then you just jerk it a couple of times and when you jerk it, it makes a real cool, subtle action. And a lot of times the fish just come up behind it, suck it in and swim off with it, you'll just feel weight. And that's when you set the hook. And that's the way you do it. Sometimes uh, you can stick it straight through. I like to rig it where you come in a little bit to one end of the egg sac and come out the other side. I think that tends to make it work a little bit better. But either way will work really good. Uh, and that's a wacky rig. Oh, come on. Can you get in there? Oh, you can't with that, can you? He's like, I can. Yes. There he is. Yeah, I got So here's the beauty of late evening fishing. Finally got a little bit of low light and these fish start running up and blowing up right on the bank. And one of my favorite baits, this speed crawl, we're running it on top, kind of like a buzz bait. Man, that fish just swallowed it. Little old keeper. So what we're doing, he came off. At late evening, I'm throwing this speed crawl, but these uh, little claws kick like a buzz bait, and it's more subtle than a buzz bait. And I like throwing that when it's real slick like it is here. Man, we are catching the monsters today, brother. <laughs> See what's happening is I'm weeding out these little ones so Jerry can catch him a big one. There you go. But that little fish right there is kind of cool. They're just, they're just coming up and kind of sucking that thing. They're not hitting it hard. It's just kind of a rollover on it, which I guess is what they do in the wild. They're pretty fish, they look good, they're just little. One of the things I always have tied on in the summer is some kind of a topwater bait. One of my favorites is a little lure called a popar, and it worked out really good this time because we'd been throwing speed crawls around shallow grass and catching some fish, but getting close to dusk, we saw some fish blowing up on the, out in the middle, actually, and what they were doing was just herding bait up toward the top, and so we ran out there, and. I threw my pop bar and, and caught some nice ones, but always be aware of that. If you're fishing the bank and you start hearing or seeing fish behind you, particularly in the summertime, 
over that deeper water, a lot of times they'll chase bait to the top. Man, take a couple minutes and, and go try to catch them. Wow. Look bigger than he was. Yeah, yeah, he they always do. <clears throat> so here's the cool part about what happened. It's nice to go with somebody that comes a lot. And Jira said sometimes smack out in the middle out here, they start chasing and that's what happened. And we saw just, and it didn't look like, you know, bass, it looked like crappy and stuff. And they, Double. that a boy. I think yours may be a little bigger. He was, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, that just always, you know, you've probably heard me say this a bunch of times on the show, be situationally aware. If you're seeing stuff blowing up, man, go to them. If you can get to them, go to them. Yes, that's a better one right there. That's a good one. Can you come over me there over my left shoulder over here? That's a better fish right there. I don't think he's giant, but he's bigger than them little bit ends. I think. Oh, we got a good one. That's a nice one right there. What's so funny about these fish is it's just little pecks on top. It's not blow ups. And uh, man, I thought that was a pound and a half, two pounder. He is bigger than that. <laughs> Come and talk to my friends right there. Yes, sir. Look at him. Man, what a pretty fish, Jerry. That's a nice one. How am I gonna get him? You ain't grabbing him around the neck. If you ever have a mouthful of trebles, you know, catching them by the lower jaw paralyzes them, but sometimes you can't grab them by the lower jaw. If you can grab them by that fin plate. You got one too? Yes, sir. Nice. This is this is not much fun. It. <laughs> Some people rather be at the office. So I saw him uh, chasing again, and uh, just did what Mr. Royce did. Threw it on top of him, popped it a couple times, and. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, maybe. <laughs> This is my guide right here. Thanks, man. Yes, That's sir. awesome. This is one of my favorite topwater baits, a little bait called a popar. The reason it's called a popar is because of this cupped lip. You throw it out and you just kind of pop it back to the boat and it spits as well as pops. It's a great little bait when fish are chasing shad in a lake. Now I throw it on a bait caster. You want a bait caster with a soft tip uh, and a pretty fast retrieve. And the reason I do that is because um, it's a little heavier bait. I can fish on a little bit heavier line than a spinner reel. That heavier line keeps the bait up on top. It doesn't pull it down under so much because this heavier line floats. Also, it's easier for me to take line up on this one because I'm constantly doing this and it doesn't get looped up like it does on a spinning reel. You can fish them on a spinning reel, but I prefer bait cast and tackle. That's the other thing about school and fish in summer. Sometimes you just have to wait them out. You know, if they're chasing bait, Alex was seeing them on, on the bait on our depth finder. If you'll just wait, they're gonna come up eventually like they are right there. Let me catch that one real quick. Like that, there you go. Nice. That is not fun. <laughs> That's a skiing bass right there. There he is. <laughs> he kind of gave up. He's like, well, I'll let him let me go. There you go. <laughs> I had to stop my forward progress. Hey, can you run us? They're, they're uh, still running over there. We talk a lot too about pond management. A lot of times people get it backwards. They want to keep the big ones and let go of the little ones, but it should be the opposite. You keep the little ones and let go of the big ones. The fish quit schooling out toward the middle, but it was starting to get late, so we moved in a little closer to the bank and we're fishing some coves and points, and we caught a couple more on the pop bar. A little better than eight inches, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little better. Jared's doing the same thing. He just threw up here, right in that corner where there probably wasn't water two weeks ago, was there? No, not at all. And now they're they're up in it. Good job, bro. Thank you, sir. He's throwing a little uh, baby bass color pop bar. I'm throwing a chrome black back in it. But what you want is something that 
looks like a shad. Something's got some silver in it. And that's what that one has. And this fish, Jared had to tell me this fish was on. Just, yeah, you hardly knew it, did you? Mm -hmm. Which means they're eating, typically. <laughs> That's a pretty good one right there. When you, when you can't even see the bait in their mouth. They, they ate it good. When, they, when they're eating it like that, that's what they're wanting. <laughs> and when the guy's not paying attention, I'm gonna do a little surgery on him. We're gonna see if we can get him back in the water. You know, he blew up on it, but none of them have done that so far, have they? Hey, that's big. That's a nice that's one. one. Yep. That fish was right where he was supposed to be. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. So we're about to get dark, and uh, what you want to remember, do you see that fish up there? He's calling you, Jerry. I didn't see, I got a tie. What you want to remember is at dark, there, uh-oh. I'm in the trolling motor, I think. I'm either in the trolling motor or I'm in a can you pull this for me? Can you hold this for me? I'm gonna try to get him undone and then I'll... Ooh, don't snap. Did he snap it? Uh -uh. I'm trying to get it under it. There we go. There we go, I got it. Well, that was uh, an adventure. <laughs> That's night fishing at its best. But anyway, what I was saying is you either want something loud or you want something bigger and bulkier. So what I'm throwing is this pop R, and it's, it's got a loud noise to it. Uh, but if you're not throwing something that's noisy on top, like if you're partial to spinner baits or worms, you can catch them on those at night, but go with a darker color, which sounds not right, but they feed by silhouette. And so a darker color makes a better silhouette. So if you're gonna throw a worm, throw a black one. Throw a spinner bait, big blades, dark skirt. And when it gets summer, this is what happens. So one of the one of the best things about me, I think, is my family. I, I'd be willing to tell you that all the time. The best thing about me is my wife and my kids. And I've been a daddy for about 19 years. My oldest is 19, and I got a 13 and 11 year old. And it, man, it just it's a miracle to see and so cool thing about jared is he's just starting that's right <laughs> and there's they're gonna have a little baby in november so yep sam's 18 weeks tomorrow okay and uh we got a little girl on the way she's due november 2nd so we're excited it was a blessing we uh we had a lot of goals in life and crossed most of them out and having a baby was the, the last one on the list and for now, and uh, it didn't take long, and you know, we found out February 23rd. We started trying at the beginning of February, so. Yeah, that's awesome, man, and you know, the cool thing about a family and what we're doing here is, you know, if you can get time with your kids, particularly in today's generation, away from cell phones, away from video screens, and get them out like this and spend quality time with them, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, he's young enough to be my son, and that's the kind of thing I would do with my kids is, hey, let's get them on the water. Let's have good conversation with them about the Lord, but also just about things in life, you know, you can help them with. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's, I've already got a little vest picked out, and I think we're gonna try and design a little uh, floatable swaddle. Yeah. So uh, it'll have deed in it, keep the mosquitoes <laughs> off. <laughs> And, yeah, you uh, had to patent that and uh, sell it, man. There you go. So we're we're excited about it, and uh, it's, it's almost halfway over already. Yeah. So it's amazing how the Lord worked. What a miracle life is like that, and what a blessing it is. And so you know, you guys out there watching, if you just remember, the Lord tells you in His Word, if you'll train up a child in the way he should go, then He won't depart from it. And that'd be my encouragement to you. That's what we're still trying to do. It's our encouragement to you guys also. 
As it began to get dark, I picked up the speed crawl again, and I actually started throwing it and reeling it a little quicker, let it come up to the top and those legs kick. And it actually looks like a little subtle buzz bait. And in a clear lake like this, man, it's a great bait to use. That fish right there, he was out off of it a little bit or either he chased it out. They're getting bigger at night, aren't they, Jared? They are. Everything we caught before dark was little tiny little bitty. And these aren't giant fish, but they're better. better ones. Yep. And that one just hit the speed crawls, running it like a buzz bait. That's about all you can throw around this grass. It's kind of mossy. That's a better fish right there. Well, I thought he was. He better than the last one anyway. <laughs> Jared, I may talk you into throwing one of these. Yeah, I might have to do that. <laughs> it's really fun watching them come up and get, it's just like fishing a buzz bait, but you can fish it through anything. And man, he just, he actually sucked it in like they're supposed to on the top water. Nice one. We were fishing in the daytime at this lake. I'd probably throw a, a speed crawl that was a green pumpkin or even watermelon because it's real clear. But at night, I've gone to this dark. If I had a black, I'd throw it. I don't even have any with me, but this is June bug. It's a darker color. Gives them a better silhouette to hit. So it's, it's a crawfish imitation. And I can fish it on the bottom like a crawfish, but these little claws actually swim. So I can swim it through the middle of the water column like a, looks like a brim. But my, one of my favorite things to do is this time of year when they get up in grass, I kick it up to the top. I go to a little lighter weight, kick it up to the top, and fish it like a buzz bait. And those little legs just kick across the top, and it's real subtle. And man, they can't they can't stand it. Well, you talk me into it. <laughs> this is a little bait that we use a lot on the show. It's one of my favorite baits. We catch a lot of fish on it. It's called a Zoom Speed Crawl. Uh, this color happens to be June Bug. It's one of my favorites in water that's not very clear, kind of dirty water. Um, what we rig it on is an eighth ounce bullet weight, uh, and that depends on the depth of the water and the wind, but typically most of the time I'm using an eighth ounce. A two-aught extra wide gap gamakatsu hook, and this is how you rig it. It's what we call a Texas rig. So I'm gonna come in the, the end of the bait, the, the claws are going backwards. I'm gonna come in the end of the bait on the side that doesn't have ribs, about a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna push it through. I'm gonna push it all the way up over the hook and then over the crook of that hook and that's what holds it up. That little crook holds it on. And then I'm gonna look at where that hook lays on that bait like this straight. I'm gonna bend the bait and poke the hook through right where that hook was laying. Now, the bait should be flat or straight. It's really important that you rig this bait straight and it doesn't helicopter. And then now that hook is exposed so it'll hang up on stuff. So what I do is back it up just a little bit and push it back into the plastic on the back of the bait. I don't want to stick it way in there because it'll ball up. I just want it barely nicked inside the skin of the back of that speed crawl. And that's a speed crawl Texas rig. And that's a great little bait just about anywhere you can go to catch bass. Uh, jumping bass, tarpon fish. They're getting on the speed crawl, man. I'm getting on it too. <laughs> Jared might be digging around for one down there. That's what makes night fishing fun. Can't see anything you're doing. It makes it all an adventure. What was that? I had a great time fishing with Jared, doing some of my favorite things. I love throwing a top water lure like a pop R. Caught him doing that. I love throwing a speed crawl on top. Caught him doing that. I love throwing a trick worm and a wacky worm. And I love fishing in the late evening, that last 30 minutes before dark and first 30 minutes after dark. I can remember my dad doing that with me on Lake Oliver growing up. Man, it's just a great time. Things come to life. You catch fish when it's so hot outside when you're not always doing that. And so it was a lot of fun. But as it got dark, we realized to get film and to see what we were doing, we had to turn the lights on. And the light did a good thing. It helped us to see. It also started attracting bugs. And then I realized, you know what, as I fish on these big lakes, the light is a good thing. People put lights on their boat docks. The lights attract the bugs. The bugs attract the little minnows. The little minnows attract the bigger fish. And the, those brim and, 
and shad attract the big bass. So as we fish at night on bigger lakes, a lot of times we'll look for docks that have lights on them when we catch fish around them. It always seems like something good comes from the light around these lakes. You know our lives are the same way. When you read about light in God's Word, it's always something good. There's several times that light is mentioned. Uh, in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, let me read you what it says about light. It says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, when we are light to the world, it draws other people to Jesus. There's another place, and one of my favorite verses is from Psalm 119.105. It says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I think he puts it in that order for a specific purpose, that he's going to show us, you know what, every day the steps that we need to take. He's not going to show us a month down the road or sometimes even a week down the road, but his light shows us where we're to step every day. And if we take in step, steps in faith, we're going to walk down the road and make it that week out and that month out. And then finally, there's a verse of Scripture in John chapter 9, verse 5, where Jesus says, He is the light of the world, and if you have Him in your life, you'll no longer walk in darkness. So maybe you're there tonight watching this show and learning about fishing, and you realize, man, my life kind of is in darkness. My life is kind of in shambles and I need the light of the world to make a difference in my life. Well, Jesus is the light of the world, and all you have to do to have a relationship with Him, for Him to take you out of the dark, is to ask Him to forgive you of your sins, to come and live in your heart, and be Lord of your life. Hey, thanks so much for listening tonight. Hey guys, what we do at Go Fish Ministries is share the gospel and encourage believers in their walk with Christ. We do this through a variety of events, such as wild game dinners, kids camps, men's events, music events, or even if you or someone you know just needs a day on the water. Go Fish Ministries wants to point you toward Jesus and help you know Him better. Contact us through our website. We'd love to serve you any way we can. God bless you and go fish. You come on up here. Throw. Can't tell how big he is, he's about the same. We had a little period there where we caught some nicer ones. Now we're getting the littler ones again, but I am not complaining. So at night, it's really a feel thing. You kinda, and that's a good training for topwater fishing, catching them by feel instead of by sight. That's what you wanna do even when you can see them. And bring you a good headlamp so you can see what you're doing. He was way out off the bank, wasn't he? Big one. Big one. Am I throwing up there in like an inch of water? Basically, oh, okay. yeah. What you got there, brother? Keeper? Another keeper. There you go. So they're off the bank a little they bit. They are off the bank. What's happening with Jared is he's, I'm throwing all up in this grass and the last 50 yards or so, he's got more bites than I have off the bank. I think what may be happening is this water was up a lot and it's starting to come back down. Were you on top or just under? Under. Yep. Under popping it. Letting That's it sink. cool. It just shows you at night they can see that stuff, but he's throwing a darker color. He ate it good. Did he really? No, I, he reset himself when he wanted to flop up here. Uh -uh. He wanted to stay on camera a little bit longer. So Jared, we started tonight about you know, 6, 6.30, a couple hours before dark. What's the time frame you typically fish when you're night fishing like this? So I, I normally, I'll come out here about 7.30, uh -huh. and depending on the bite, I mean, I might fish till 12.30, one o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay, so you'll stay a while. Right. Now, do you find that there's a, a time where they bite better? Is it right after dark or is it after it's gotten dark good or does it kind of vary? Or? It varies. Okay. Um, most of the time right after dark, about right now. Yep. Um, but I mean, there's been times from 12 to one o'clock in the morning, I didn't want to get off the lake because I couldn't get the line in the water without one on. Really? Yeah. 
Man, I'm challenging for the big end of the day right there. Oh, he stole my crawfishy. You little thiefy. For fishing down a bank, we're on a small lake tonight, but on bigger lakes, if you're fishing at night and you come up on a dock that's got a light like this, man, that's a prime place. It'll attract little fish. Little fish attract the bigger fish. And a lot of times people have lights on their dock. It also means they got brush out in front of them too. So it's a really good place to fish. He is way out here off the bank. They're just kind of getting on it. He's not a bad one. He's not a big honker, but can't tell if he's a throwback or a keeper. He's close, Alex. It's still fun. Even the little ones are fun. Thank you, Lord. Got there, man. I uh, made a lot of racket. <laughs> he made a lot of noise, didn't he? So what they seem to be biting best tonight is this little scuttle. He ate that just like top water. Look at that, like it's supposed to. And see how that thing ran up the line. That's exactly what it's supposed to do too. Keeps it from balling up. All we're doing is just running that thing real slow on the top, just enough to keep the legs on top. And they're just kind of coming and sucking it down. I think they think it's a frog. And we're catching a good many of them doing that. <clears throat> so it's about 9.40, almost 10 o'clock. Um, we've been out here about three or four hours. I've had a great time. Yeah. Caught a lot of fish. Um, and this is kind of the key to it. When you come and it's hot, you know, it's too hot to go out in the middle of the summer when we where we live in Georgia come in the late evening you know dusk about 7 30 8 o'clock and if you can stay a couple three hours after dark man that can be some of the best fishing of the day if you can stay even longer it can get even better so just remember when you come you want things that are either loud on the top or dark colored and that's kind of the key to fish night bring a good headlamp so you can see what you're doing bring some good bug spray <laughs> but have a good time fishing I want to thank Jerry for being with me, man. I had appreciate a, it. Had a great time. I did too. It was we'll, awesome. We'll do it again. Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for being with us and join us next time.